It's an interesting start, and you can you can understand that Jack wants to kind of get himself involved and hit a few balls what in, and it's just such an unusual sort of situation to come out on such a big court against somebody as established as Rafa, but that is not a winning strategy. No, no, far from it. That's the polar opposite, I think, of what he wants to do, is stay way back and rally. That's not going to work for him. We'll be keeping an eye on his ball toss. Been talking a lot about how it's kind of just moved out to the right, trying to protect the ab, the serve on the. So there's the motion. It's a beautiful motion. A young man who's six foot four, he can serve like this for long periods of time. It's going to stand him in good stead for many years, this serve. I don't remember seeing the tape under his shirt last week, did you? Nope. Ow. You know, he, he rallies well, does Draper. Uh, I think very well for a young player who's as big as he is. But it's a different story staying back and rallying. If you get too deep in the court with Nadal, a whole different ball game. It, he's going to play his best tennis when he, he's more aggressive, not when he defends. nerves there uh, he backs himself Jack as well he's got a lot of confidence in himself he always has and and rightly so he's got a good game he grew very late actually he was a he was a bit of a grinder back in the day which is actually what has allowed him to get up the rankings as quickly as he would have liked you look at his height and you kind of think naturally he would want to be an aggressive player but he was actually not that tall for through his teenage years and then grew late on and and that's been the part that obviously they're trying to sort of incorporate more of more ventures to the net but trying to take up a better position on the baseline and not just out rally opponents because he's so solid at the back that actually he knows that's a way he can win a lot of these matches. I think that's a, that's a good evolution of a player like him, though. I, I, if he's had to grind at the back of the court, he built a foundation where he can win a lot of points against certain styles of players. Confirmation there, just. But then, then the top end comes later. You get the foundation, the big serve, the net game.
the touch, all of that, the guile that comes later. So it's it's a good way that he's learnt his tennis so far. Let's. Beautiful court position there from Rafa as well, taking the ball on the rise. A lot easier to generate that kind of pace if you do that. intent but a couple of things there he started a long way back a long way back there before he started moving that gives him less time to get to the net to cover and the approach wasn't it wasn't good enough against this man against a lot of players yes it's got to be deeper a more penetrating approach to give yourself a chance at the net and don't start so far back behind that baseline to make your approach That was a smart shot from Draper just today and just the three losses on a clay court to a left-hander. shake you up a bit he tried to come in this time and had you know had that vicious topspin to deal with on the half volley it didn't do a bad effort but to, and, and that was a seriously good pass it, it looked simple but it wasn't it was low he had to viciously hit the topspin up tip the tape as it went past and also needed the accuracy Soren used a two-handed approach shot a lot last week in Adelaide, Mark, and, and I like that play. Even then, he gave Rafa a chance, though. He went to the forehand here a little bit dangerously and could have been burnt, but I think he's got to use that two-hander, take it inside the baseline a lot if he's going to come forward, but hit it with more depth than that. That's all. I mean, against, uh, against a normal player, that's a good play, but, you know, against a player like this, you just have to... You have to hit every shot just that little bit better. Because that was a forehand that Rafa probably shouldn't have missed. Coach James Trotman felt as though he should have come in a little bit more in that semi-final against Quan. Talked a lot about uh, not being proactive enough when he saw a shortish ball, so, but already you can see in this match trying to latch onto it. And that is a good play if Rafa's going to stand that far back with that serve. 
Just look at where Nadal is trying to return this ball from. Removes a bit of paint on the way through to all. Removes a bit of pressure having to uh, hold his serve, and he's doing that very effectively so far. The anticipation of this crowd is is obvious, isn't it? They're they're so excited to see the great man out here again. Now on the flip side of the coin market, you know, Draper has a game that gets your attention because he's got that serve. So, you know, Rafa, by his standards, has probably started a little bit slowly too. Missed a few obvious balls. Why would we expect anything less? <laughs> Terrific movement from Draper, it has to be said as well, doesn't it? He moves incredibly well for his height. Look at this court coverage. Still got his racket on this. You know, he was tempted to come in on that two-hander and that rally, and, and the match-up with the left-hander, especially the Nadal Foyan, is, I think, probably thrown him a little bit in the early stages. He, he likes that backhand down the line to a right-hander's backhand. Against Nadal, it's maybe not quite as effective. Jack doesn't mind returning from deep, which is not a, a, a bad thing at times, particularly on the juice side against Rafa. A little more so on this side, he can get pulled out of position a little bit, but it does take the spin out of the serve a bit. When you try and take Rafa's serve early, even in his second serve, it's moving so much, it's tough to actually get a good connection on it.
Yeah, it's like slow death sometimes in a rally with Nadal. You know, he builds and builds and you, your effort level continues to increase when you're trying to defend against it and then he, it all becomes too much. for guessing with the footwork on the return. Nadal 3-2 opening set. For him in a situation like this on this court. He's had to work reasonably hard, I think, too, for the first few games. So his heart rate will be up. The competitive juices are certainly flowing. That was a poor shot from Rafa. You don't see that too often. I mean, lost his direction on that slice. You can see him shaking his head at himself. Tempted to say early, Petch, there's, is, or ask the question early, maybe more than make a statement, but uh, is there a bit of an issue with some of his timing? He'll probably work his way into the match. That's what he normally does. Oh, what a shot. And a good sign that he's settled very nicely out here. It's a good quick first step, too, for a big man. He's, he's a good athlete, Jack Draper. trying to take the second serve on just uh, last year when he was trying to build a little bit of momentum getting into this tournament he was a lot further back on his first and second serve returns and then as the tournament sort of wore on he got closer and closer to the baseline but he is definitely already up looking to try and make something happen on the second serve of Draper's okay. Draper. and he's not being all that successful at the moment just the three points for Nadal against the Draper serve in the opening six games and this probably is the most dangerous part of uh, each segment of uh, the new balls that we have obviously this is the seventh game here there'll be the ninth game obviously Rafa has talked a little bit about the ball not necessarily being to his liking And if that's just in his mind right now, this could be an awkward service game. Draper doing very nicely. Not sure the sponsor there would be overly happy with the towel draped over some of their court signage. <laughs> You've got to do more with that, Jack. I mean, you've got to have the presence of mind while you're sprinting forward there as to where you're going to go. And quite often you change your mind at the last second about where you go, but that ball has to be deep more than anything. You cannot just push this straight to the Nadal forehand. I like the way he's moving, though. He, he's a good mover for a, for a tall guy, isn't he? Oh, 
Godzilla. James Trotman on the right of your picture there, who's been working uh, with Jack now for a while. He was at the National Tennis Centre back in uh, London for a long time, sort of uh, just helping with various players coming through. for a better person in his corner. Can Australia take a little bit of ownership over Jack Draper, seeing that uh, James Trotman did coach down here in our academy as well? Pet, just, just throwing the question out there. You can, you can take it. You, <laughs> you can have it. Well, he's a good lad, and uh, James Trotman on the right of the, of the front through with his hand up over his mouth then now that's that's him good friend of ian barclay who taught pat cash here in australia all those years ago no scare in the seventh game for all present and correct as we get back underway. 15 long. New balls here. This should help Jack Draper serve. Look, the one he really causes a lot of damage with, I think, is this wide one to the second court. But today it goes to the Nadal forehand. So it'll be interesting for me to see how much he uses that particular angle. Ball. Fifteen. Mm. Why don't you use the second serve on that second court down the middle a little more than normal? What do you think? He's going to have to think about where he serves often. I mean, it's not going to be as simple. I mean, his first serve, it can uh, obviously it'd be a little more simple, but his second is going to be a, a, a big test. So far, he's done it brilliantly. Easy pace as well, 30, as you said. 15. Lovely motion. Yeah, when you have the technique right, especially if you're a big man with long levers like he has, it, you, if he's got the right technique, he can serve within himself and do it hour upon hour. What an asset. And I, if I had one complaint about Jack's game last week, it was that you know he's trying to use the drop shot, but he hasn't executed it very well since I've seen him here in Australia. That's that's not a good one. That landed near the service line and made him have to come up with a brilliant pass to win the point. I'm not sure he wants to use that. And it's put him under pressure here. 3-4, 30 all. He didn't want to be here. Had a chance to finish that point off a different way. So I blame the drop shot here. And it's put the pressure on as and Raph has also changed his return position there on the second serve. He's gone miles back. Th this could cost him the first set. Part of the new coaching rule. Sure, Raf, Rafa was asking the question there of Carlos Moyer, should yes. I move back further? Where, where should I stand? Well, you know, you'd think he'd know. And now I think he was between, he, d he lost his way there, Rafa. I bet you had quite a bit of time to hit that back. He didn't need to block it, did he?
an he's advantage for Jack, of course, Fissy, sorry, is the fact that he's not just tall in terms of his serve, but tall advantage for taking the spin that Rafa tries to put up to you. Yeah, good point. It's, yes, because it, it jumps like a mule, doesn't it? But Rafa looks a little bit shaky here on his timing to me. And it's only subtle. And dare I say it, but, I, but I, that's what we're seeing. Who's tentative there? Game Draper. Jack cleaning things up nicely. First Ball bit games. of real pressure on his serves, done very nicely. He normally hits that with two hands too. I, you don't see him chip that return that much, Mark. That's strange for me. The last three points were, they were averaged by his lofty standards. That's more what he's looking for. Yep, that's vintage. 15 love. And he's been a good vintage, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's uncorked that one. <laughs> Very good. Jack actually, he tried to challenge that, but obviously John Blom judged that he, he challenged too late. confirmation that the ball's out which of course the players are legitimately allowed to ask for 40 love that's the serve that's been really missing since the uh, ab strain that he had he really put paid to a season after Wimbledon as well of course have been undefeated in Grand Slam tennis up until that semi-final that was potentially going to take place against Kyrgios Best game of the opening set for Nadal. Still serving beautifully. Legends on and off the court here today. Fault. He's just missing a few balls that are unusual for Rafa Nadal to miss. It's interesting to see him step in on that first point of the game, isn't it? 30 all when he wanted to make the return, try and get himself to break point, which he ultimately yeah, did. He was way back. Now he's in. No, it's no, not yeah. easy to keep switching that significantly in terms of your return position to get the timing. Thanks, buddy. It seems like there's a few teething problems here. Both players have been a little bit uneasy. It's 
it's the tension and that it would be the sweat from Rafa in the previous game that Jack's taken it upon himself to, to clean. <laughs> Rafa raising his eyebrows. He's still dripping. It's going to win a lot of matches, isn't it? This left-handed serve. Yeah. I mean, because the, the one out wide is just so devastating. You get so much cut on it. Look at that. That's actually drifting back to the opponent. But because you've got to go out wide to try and cut off that serve out wide. And by the way, Neil Fraser is sitting right behind that serve. He will appreciate this more than anyone in this stadium. A memorable motion that he had that has stood this test of time. One of the great left-handed serves in our history, Neil Fraser. Okay, Draper. He'll be loving this serving. Five games all. <laughs> that was a look of pleasure, by the way. Sitting next to Jane Herdlicker, the president of Tennis Australia. Rafa's definitely having a guess, even from far back on that first serve of Draper's when you watch him. He's moving before Draper hits it every single time, virtually, at the moment. The forehand of Draper, you know better than most of us here in this stadium, Mark. He, he tends to get a little light on it sometimes, I think. with, with two, It gets a bit spinny, doesn't it? Yep. He, he can flatten it out, by the way. But sometimes in the rally, to me, he just takes a bit too much pace of it for safety. He's learning. He's young. That's... Yeah, still very much learning his Draper. This will be his highest win of his career in terms of rankings if he could get past Rafa today. Did have a win over Tsitsipas's second top 10 win. He beat in Canada. Tsitsipas five in the world on that date. Straight sets win for Draper. And of course, was a set up against Carlos Alcaraz in Basel late on in the season before losing 7-5 in the third. plan was on the return for Draper but he's going to have to go somewhere else unless he gets a little bit of a drop off here from uh, Rafa because he's picked up just a couple of points off the Nadal serve as you can see Carlos Moore looking at that data that's in the players box this year that's the second point he's taken off the first serve 14-15 
Brilliant. Forty thirteen. Rafa, even the great ones suffer yes. from it sometimes. He's dangerous, Draper. That's a, that's a big advantage for him because he can hold serve and throw a little caution to the wind on his return games. Opportunity, wasn't it? He knew it. I think he, uh, he was a bit anxious to try and flatten one out here, Jack. He's got a strong grip on the forehand, hasn't he? Creates a lot of topspin. Couldn't capitalise on that unexpected no, no, juice situation one. there, Draper. And Nadal scrambles to safety late on in the opening set, 6-5. did well did the Brit there he, he was in a bit of trouble halfway through that point and good court speed and an excellent reply with this forehand and this backhand to get him that was a beauty to get him back in the point He needs to stop the drop shot on the hard court. Oh, I haven't seen him win one from Adelaide to here, Mark. And and this is just a, an ideal in. ball that he can smash his forehand and come in. Not only is it the wrong choice, but the execution of it was really poor there. And look, if you do that against Rafa, you deserve to win the, uh, to lose the point. Sorry, it's just a young player learning. Surfaces, I understand it a little more. Apart from the fact he's got to execute it better, he's, he, he needs to get more feel on the drop shot. But on a hard court here, it's asking for trouble because the this is a cement base under this court and the ball will bounce high. Not as easy to, to use the drop shot, especially against the speed of this man. You. Those are the moments where he's been uh, just not as clinical as he used to be. Of course, it's been a, a kind of strange time for him. Four straight losses, of course, last year prior to his win over Rude at the Nitto ATP finals. Of course, a couple of losses at the United Cup as well. 
Six out of seven matches lost for Nadal. Let's first. Last time he had lost as many matches in a row as that was 2009. Lost to Novak in the Paris semis, then lost all of his matches at the ATP finals. Longest losing streak back in 2003 to 2004. Dangerous moments here for Jack Draper. I think there's a little bit more perspiration on the court, unless there's a bigger issue here for Jack as he wanders up to John Blom. <laughs> Served out wide on the other break point. Draper with his first serve. Set point. Ball. He can see what it means to him. Game he collects the opening set in. There's the advantage of having the opening set in your pocket, a yep. chance to explore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, your heart rate drops a few notches if you win the first, and now he's feeling good about himself and expect his level to rise here. As you can see from that previous graphic, it's definitely the shorter version of the game that Jack is winning more, but of course some of that coming with the uh, quality of his first serves. in there when you play from as deep as Jack is at the moment there's not really the threat in these rallies and Nadal doesn't feel any sort of pressure there again he could drop the ball short and obviously with the hook on it by the time Jack actually connected with it he was so far behind the baseline and wide all or nothing from there let's
Juice. Good signs from Draper here. He's put that disappointment straight away behind him. Advantage, Nadal. Rafa was a little flat-footed there. He was expecting the cross-court shot from Draper. Not a bad idea for a second consecutive game. Draper getting to juice on the Nadal serve. Excellent. Excellent. Used the slice well. So the feel's there. Yes. And it, he's got the feel in his hand to hit that slice. That was a beauty. Down the line, the ball stayed low. And it opened the court up for him. He's got a lovely blocked backhand return, hasn't he? With just a little flick of the wrist. Can take pace into that side very nicely. That's a loose one from Rafa. That almost looked like he, he got the wrong racket back from the stringers there with a <laughs> loose tension in his frame or something. That, that ballooned out of court. Unusual. He knew it the moment it left his strings as well. First chance for Draper to break. Some style up at the net as well. Draper. He's traveling well for a youngster. That's the plate. So I think as he matures as a player, that's the way Jack Draper will play most Fit of his tennis. He, he will base his game around his serve. He's an all-court player. If he gets a short forehand, you come in and you volley there when it's a put-away volley. And beautiful action there. He opened the face nicely. I, I actually find it a bit strange why he doesn't have more feel so far on his drop shot. And maybe it is the grip. You might have picked it. Rapper just wants this ball checked. 
whether it popped on the return. I'm saying it. nothing wrong with it. Ow. Good forehand. So that wasn't his rally forehand where he, where he whiffs up the back of the ball and creates spin, takes speed off it. He, he flattened that one out and it was effective. Draper leads two games to love. And again, it's just fascinating. Watch Rafa kind of searching for his return position off this second serve. Huge differential once again from that end, trying to get up on the baseline. It's the toughest game Actually, to hold guys, as well after you've just, just broken in, and uh, just Nadal obviously just come in and wait. one of the best in the yeah, re-break you know, business but a bit of rain I think has just started a Defensive skills from Rafa there. Draper certainly finding an extra gear at the start of the second set. A bit more pop on those ground strokes. Yeah, I think we said, well, I know I thought that Rafa would certainly lift his game here a bit, but so far we haven't seen it in the second set. And, and he seems a, a little bit below his normal high level, doesn't he, Mark? So maybe Jack Draper starting to believe more. I would say, after being up a break here and he... He'd know he's in with a fighting chance at this stage. Amazing rally by Jack Draper on the defense. Big part of this match here, isn't it? A break here. It's hard to break Jack Draper's serve twice in a set. And if he goes up three love here, he's really got this second set by the scruff of the neck.
He's got it. Dane Draper. And how well he's played a couple of the break points already in this second set, full of confidence. Got him. It's all going Draper's way at the moment. Gee, that, that was a poor volley by Rafa, though. Straight into the middle of the court with nothing on it, straight to Draper's yeah. forehand. And that's what the difference is on the back end, as I was saying, just getting a little bit more on the ball. And it's just a flatter hit going through the court, just staying a little bit lower than Rafa's as well. I think they'd be a little worried in Rafa's box right at this minute. Especially when they see what's happening out the other end of the court, growing with confidence. Third mm -hmm. That is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Leon Smith there, the uh, British Davis Cup captain. They've got a tough trip after Australia, going all the way over to uh, Bogota. Max Eisenbart, the agent, They're just next to Leon. Well, if you stand a long way back on that second court when a left hand is serving to you, it opens up that angle even more. Even though it's to his forehand, if he gets it close to the line. Let's. What's up? Must have caught the outside edge. This it was it was awfully close. If it hadn't been technology calling this ball, Mark, I would have challenged. It's got to be that good at the moment to get it past Draper. been his best shot so far today the forehand down the line that's his 10th winner from that side yes. and making some inroads on the draper serve to be fair to jack he's had a nice little strategy on his four and he's gone down the line more often than he has gone cross court he hasn't given rafa that type of ball too often from that exchange and that's why
Well, that's just a stock standard rally ball. Advantage, Draper. Trying to get him full up. And you saw the expression on his father there on Rafa's dad. Just raised the eyebrows like that's so unusual for the great man to miss an easy ball like that. And he's, he's opening the door here for Draper. Jack just asking the umpire how long they're going to play with the rain coming down again. He said, we're trying to get a full love here. That's exactly okay. what happens. Draper. I wouldn't be surprised if they both New balls, please. sit down for a moment here as the rain. Isn't it? New balls. Got a wild card into Miami last year. Beats Gilles Simon, then lost to uh, fellow Brit Cam Norrie. I know after that match with Cam, he was straight back in the gym, and that was just while he was having that lovely little run in the challenges as well. Yeah, it's a good sign. Don't you know? That was 20 centimeters down the net, that forehand. So there is some form of issue here. It's becoming apparent, I think. Not, not saying there's an injury or anything, just the timing of Rafa. He, his confidence level is down a little bit here. It's, it's a dangerous first round now. And they will be feeling it, Carlos Moya there. They'll be talking about it, don't worry, in that box about uh, where he's at, what the form looks like, and the fact that he's not quite timing the ball like they'd like. Again, outlasting Rafa. This is uh, potentially a flawless set of tennis here from Jack Draper. Draper. Just 18 times as Rafa lost a set six love. Last time coming against Dominic Team at the US Open in 2018 in that classic battle that he came back to win. 7-6 in the fifth. Well, there's a fine margin there, isn't there? From Juice. Between uh, getting back to Juice and losing your serve for the third time in a set, he cleans the line with this forehand. That 
you would have thought could go anywhere with his weight going backwards. That's how he normally hits it, but today hasn't been as safe. a good decision from Jack gave himself a little look at that as Rafa was trying to tug him further and, and further off enough. the court so just looking at his tour level scores when he's lost a, a set six he's actually only 16 times that it's happened for Rafa Keeps himself yeah. involved in this second set, does Nadal. You'd think Rafa's mind is almost into the third set now, isn't it? He, he, the way he's hit those last two balls, that one he just quickly walked across after spraying it. Now, nothing going on for Draper Rafa, but everything going ball. nicely for Jack Draper. Tough to know, isn't it? I mean, you, you're hesitant to think negative things about one of the great players in our game's history, but he does he look a fraction sluggish? Does he is he is he a little bit slow getting to the ball? Is that why he's mistiming? Well, I'm not sure. But he missed three forehands there by a long by a big margin. And that's just so unusual for this man. Let's hope it's just this set. Still there, isn't he, mentally as ever? I mean, no matter the fluctuations in his form, a little fist pump there. This is still significant to him to make sure that he stays in this set, stays focused. 
Well, I think the mind, it's just so subconscious. This is the way he's always been, and, and he's encouraging himself to continue. It's his mindset. It always has been. But, but it's, he's spraying too many balls here today. 30 now. Hey, maybe he'll snap back into gear and win the third set convincingly. We don't know. Hasn't lost this one yet. He's about to he, serve to the wrong yeah, side. His, his mind did go there for once. First time I think I've ever seen him do that. That's the serve I'm talking about. Almost 70% of his serves have gone down the tee on this side into Jack's forehand. But apart from anything else, apart from the predictability, it brings Jack into the center of the court straight away for his next shot after the return. Let's and so he's... Just, I don't still think he's Abba's allowing him to hit that serve out wide and get Jack off the court. Right, his stomach muscle. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is his favourite serve, this one down the middle, but today it's against a good left-hander who's got the swinging forehand there. Yeah, you could see how flat-footed Jack wasn't expecting it because there's been so few out there that he wasn't even really looking for that particular serve, but... You can see how important it is to have it to at least keep him honest for the one down the tee as well because he's just been sitting on that and having a field day. Certainly doesn't look like he wants to batten down the hatches to win these points. The last couple of first serves, he's tried to follow them into serve and volley. That he's just let fly. Based on that first serve, Jack Draper, though, will come out Draper serve to serve to take the set shooting. off Nadal after the break. Fifteen well, He didn't change direction there quickly. That, that ball hit the ground before the net. Gee, we have to be careful, though. Um, easy to critique, but... Jack made a mistake, didn't he? But he sort of faked that he was going back to the middle raffer and stayed, so he had a swinging forehand. But yeah, not sure with the movement. Time will tell. Nicely done. Well, the most interesting part of this match you would expect is coming up after this game. If, if Jack does indeed close this out, what happens early in the third for me will be very telling. A very tidy set of tennis from Jack Draper. He levels things up Stick with the defending two. champion. One what a piece.
with the 21 year old. Good sign. Carlos Costa there Good behind his agent obviously a great player in his day as well, chatting to his dad. Everyone's going to have their thought. Number one in the world, Carlos. I'd, I'd say he was a great player. Well, it's got to be said, it wouldn't surprise anyone in this stadium if he if he fires up again now, Rafa, and turns his form around. But he he will have to. Good signs early. difference there isn't it look at that change around from the opening set Rafa winning the uh, majority of the longer rallies there set to suddenly Draper finding a way to stay in those rallies and turn them into his favor okay. excellent hard oh. serve the revival is on first game third set Still a lot of work ahead for Jack Draper in this one. showing signs he wants to be more aggressive from him to come in that close to the baseline is not always normal for Rafa when he when he returns serve and the second shot certainly was on the front foot Well, isn't he Draper as well just playing with it I mean that has always been a big advantage for Rafa in the course of his career other players have had to adjust to him it's very difficult to find a practice partner that plays anything like him as well so when you come out to start playing against him it's never going to be easy Draper acquitted himself well on serve in the opening set not so much on the returning games but as you could see there again getting ever more comfortable I just feel like he's not as quick as he normally is out to the forehand. That's that's what I'm seeing, and and I mean he's he's done some damage with his forehand in this in this match, but 
but not as much as he normally would. And I think he's made most of his, well, a lot of his errors off that side. And uh, he just doesn't seem to be out there quick enough to me, Mark. I agree with you. He's trying to get aggressive. That was the advice from the coach's box. Trying to implement that. Game Draper. And not a good sign when you start guessing where the opposition is serving. One game on. He hopped to his left there, Rafa, thinking the ball was going to his forehand, left the backhand wide open. That's not reacting to where the serve's going. It's where you think it's going. It's a bit dangerous and a sign that you're having trouble with the opposition serve. Great defence again from Jack Draper. Yes, Rafa would have expected to make the volley, but that was about as awkward as Draper could have made it for him up high. Yeah, maybe a little bit of luck there from Jack. I mean, that, that looked ungainly, didn't it, that high? He's so good around the net. He misses so few volleys when he gets his opponent off the court and receives a, a light return when he's got time. But got to be unlucky. Jack jagged that one high. More unforced errors than winners for Rafa out here at the moment. And his problems are mounting. Big miss from Jack there. Some of these points you just know that you. it's almost like it's teetering here. He's looking at his box. Jack there knowing. Gee, at 15.30, that was a huge opportunity. 
Justin Shering in the front of your picture there. He does work with Joe Salisbury, coached Jack from five years old till 14. Tell you what, I think he's starting to cramp. He's had problems with it in the past, Jack Japer. I hope I'm wrong, oh, but just that little you. look over to the box looked a bit concerning, and it's happened to him a number of times. I, I think you've picked up on it. I mean, he lifted the palm of his hand to the sky there, and it comes out of nowhere. He's wow. had a, he's had every test in the in the book, and uh, oh, you know, that, and that is cruel. If that's the case, Mark. Those are four yeah. very uncharacteristic yeah. and unforced errors from Jack Draper. Something possibly no, no, amiss yeah. for the British player. 2-1 Nadal. This will put a lot of negative thoughts in young Jack Draper's head, too. Yep. Great catch in the stands, but, you know, once... Love you, one minute you think you're in the match Thank and you're a realistic chance to win, the next you think, gee, I'm cramping, and uh, a lot of negative thoughts creep in. There's a process that starts happening. Just let's hope he can keep it together here and this condition disappears, That the cramp that is. the point but it is going to just take a little bit more out of track and also the you, you know this is also an emotional concern for Jack as well if he's feeling that cramp coming which could just compound things not going to help things. Fifteen thirteen. And anyone that's ever had this knows it's like a gradual onset. You feel it in the muscle, oh, yeah. you feel it coming, and you're just doing everything within your power just to try and keep everything loose. That's a long way out, though, from finishing a match, isn't it, from here? I think uh, Jack's calling the trainer there as well. He's going to get electrolytes. He's going to do whatever he can, I'm sure, to stay out here. But as you say, Fitzy, he's just too far out for the win to come in from here. It's too physical against Rafa, even if he's not playing at his best. Thirty 
Draper at breaking point in a couple of ways. Great save. But this will buoy Rafa yes. and his thought processes too. He'll be he'll be think he'll be sniffing blood here now because he knows that his opponent's struggling. I don't know if this is the one or not though. Advantage, Draper. It's hard to know what to say, Mark. Is you just have to see what unfolds here. It's like a, it's like a drama starting to build. Yeah, and I don't think the crowd are that aware that no, he's struggling as badly as he is potentially physically here, and he's called the trainer out because of it. This will be a great save here from Draper. He's had a nice helping hand from Rafa again, though. Got a bit of a problem here, not just because of uh, the physicality, but it's also affecting his serve. I know it's early days of this uh, yes. third set at the moment, but he's under 50% of his first serves going in, and that one didn't have the angle on it at all. It doesn't look as though he's pushing up as much with his legs. And you take away his first serve, and he is uh, not going to be the formidable force that we saw in the second set. There's a number of indicators that are coming our way. The no, first no. serve has gone. Look at this. Last couple of games as well, he's lost eight Ks on his forehand compared to the rest of the match. Suddenly you're giving Rafa the most com precious commodity of all, which is time on the ball. And instantly you start to defend more because of that. More physical effort defending. No way. What a save from Draper. <laughs> well, if this was 5 all in the fifth, it would be dramatic. But right now, he's just hanging on, trying to hold this serve early in the third. He gets lucky here because that's, that's not a good volley. He picks the right way and reflexes it. Good effort. Not a bad attempt from Rafa as well to steal it back. doubt he has I sensed this he, he's got the no, guys no. on the side of the court that would have told him if he hadn't realized himself that his opponent's struggling the more of these longer type rallies that go on from his perspective the better now and that's his style of game that's how he wants to play 
If he can grab a break here early in the third, it'll go a long way towards his chances. Well, that was telling. A double fault that went a long way out. And they know. What a shame. I'm shattered for him. Yeah, I am. I, I just feel so bad because I know how hard he works. I know that he's, he's tried to fix this problem and he's, uh, he's done everything that you can ask him. And this is not being unprofessional. He's not a, a distilled version of what a professional tennis player should be. He is absolutely invested on every level, but. There is something that they can't quite get to the bottom of yet. 15 love. And the reality is the more it goes on, the more scar tissue there is, the more nerves are going to play a part because he's worried it's going to happen again. Look at his face. He's, he, he's just internally shattered. Done all this work to get to this place. Gosh, that's tame. I mean, you can see the idea. He's just trying to pull him out of court here, but just had nothing on it. That's a fabulous effort from Draper. Fifteen, thirteen. It's not a tennis match anymore for Jack Draper. It's just a, a battle to survive, to stay standing up. Maybe the only achievement that he's thinking right now is to try and get to the finishing line rather than having a stop. Thank <laughs> you. 
turn around can go along with how it is at the moment and, and, and try and get to the finishing line with it, but I don't think it's going to significantly get better. And again, as I say, first serve not doing what it did in the opening couple of sets. 15. That is breathtaking. And given the fact of where he is with the physical discomfort, it's going to take shots like this to stay competitive. But this is the talent that Draper has at his disposal. From that far back to beat Nadal, that is special. Takes a lot of energy to hit the ball hard. And again, that's kind of the dilemma that he's in at the moment to try and keep the ball, sh the, the point short. He's got to take it on and, and kind of drive with the legs. But obviously, that is going to compound the problem that he has with the yeah. cramping. And every game he has to serve with the legs. Yeah, and again, it's double the work at the moment because he's down at 35% of first serves going in. So he's using his legs once to miss the serve, and then he has to drive again for the second. 40, 50. But the form is not there for Rafa either, is it? It's sort of dramatic from both ends at the moment. Yeah, this is a, an underwhelmingly sort of performance from Rafa in terms of the defense of his title at the moment. Long way to go. What happened there with Rafa? He didn't chase either. Not only his four games two two. No, he didn't. Well, you spoke about a little bit earlier on, didn't you, about his uh, perhaps a little bit more slower into that forehand corner these days than he has been in the past. Certainly looked like it there. That was confusing to me because it, it, I don't think I've ever seen him pull out going for wide forehand. I thought he had it covered. Are we in the twilight zone or where are we, Mark? <laughs> Maybe, maybe cramping is catching. No, I'm not. I'm being silly now. I'm not uh, serious, but he, he just doesn't look like he's moving like Rafa Nadal to me. Well, you would have thought that he would have just locked in in the last 15 minutes and, and made balls, wouldn't you? I mean, that last returning game from Rafa was surprising given the way that Jack is down the other end of the court at the moment. Fifteen. Didn't serve any aces in the second set. His fourth one of the match now. Ah! 
la Fifteen, thirteen. It's almost engaging because it's underwhelming. Yeah, there's like a look of concern on his face at the moment from Rafa. I mean, I'm sure that's more about his form than it is about his physical capabilities out here. happening mark here this is for me this is staggering I, I, you've ne I've never seen Rafa like this uh, and the look on his face there sums it up that is shock pure shock and he's confused I mean Jack's struggling physically and he was serving and volleying there that's exactly what Jack wants to see. A nice short point, chance to just hit a clean winner straight off the return, not to invest anything physically. Oh, that's better. Yeah, pretty good forehand there. Thirteen, Simultaneously very good and very bad in this match at the moment, Rafa. Misses by Great three current. meters. That is incredible. Not a scoreline that anyone would have predicted at the start. He's set. If if his body can hold up, and the cramp stays away to a degree, he's not without a chance. Still, it seems. Fault. doing their bit to try and uh, help Jack alleviate some of the problems that he's had. Drinks getting mixed up. Fault. 
15. Just jogging quite carefully, gingerly, isn't he, Rafa, at the end of some of these runs across the court? Well, I guess this will sound like a contradiction as to what I said earlier in the match about his drop shotting a, attempts, but you can understand him thinking that a little bit now when, when he wants to shorten the points, but uh, gee whiz, you can have to execute better than that. It's the way... Game. Draper wanted that Draper. game to go, though. He wanted it to be quick. Are we missing a ball? Or did it come back? You know, most of us had this, had this feeling when we played quite often. Couldn't time the ball. Didn't have confidence. Speak for yourself, Fitzy. No, no, I, I'm speaking for most of us. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly for the two in this box I'm speaking for. But, but that, you know that really horrible, hollow feeling where you just didn't have confidence to step up and hit the ball? And for the first time ever, I think I'm, I'm seeing Rafa with a bit of that today. He'll probably pull himself through it, but it must be worrying him. Fifteen love. That's what he's searching for. It's been elusive. Fifteen all. Although he lost it, you kind of feel as though that's the type of investment he needs to just make in every single rally with Draper feeling the way he is at the moment. And he'll get his interest down the road. He's not going to find his forehand today out here. He's not going to find his backhand. He's already been out here for two hours and 40 minutes, but he can get the win and he can survive to fight another day. Again, the scarcity of those serves going out to the backhand side on the G side for Draper has earned him a lot of points when he has gone there. And that was a nice change up. Jack, I think it was a let or? No, it was no let. 40-15. He hasn't shown signs of the cramp in the last couple of games, has he? Maybe the, that little massage at the change of ends has been helping him. 
Well, Rafa hasn't really extended the point in the last sort of 10 or 15 minutes. Wonderful shot. And if there's a leg you're going to try and force him to hit on, it's on the backhand side, actually. The left leg has been the one that looks like it's cramping there. He could load on. Sorry, his right leg looks to be the one that's cramping there. He could load onto his left leg and just drive through the shot. Found a little pace on that one. Tantalizingly close there again, Draper, but Nadal hangs on. Good fight back from Draper. Maybe there are signs that Jack is feeling a little bit better out there. That's his first serve that's gone over 200K since the set point in the second set. Digging deep. Actually jogging on the spot. Trouble here on serve, though. Love her, too. Just handing one of the balls back to John Blom, who lost its pressure apparently. Please. Well, a gamble that pays off. At love 30, this set is in the balance. 15, 30. He's, he hits a pretty good approach. And Rafa's had a career making these shots. Everybody that's followed his career was expecting him to hit the winner there. It didn't look like going over, did it? In slow motion there. Jack hasn't hit a serve down the tee on the ad side with his first serve. He certainly hasn't made one in this second, in this third set so far. Quite significant issues with the ball at the moment. Went for it. The one you suggested. Let's second. So, 
I'm not quite, quite sure whether we should keep referring to this, Mark, but this is timing that is way off for this man. He must be confused himself. Let's Well, a positive point there from Rafa on the front foot. 30, 40. Better timing. Well, and one thing you have to admire, he is not playing anywhere near his best right now, but he's humble enough to recognise that and fight with what he has today. Draper facing set point. Finds the tee serve on the outside for the first time in the set. That's yes. impressive. And it was an excellent serve as well because Rafa had held his balance. He hadn't guessed. And with the scoring system, you just don't know how telling that ace was. We don't know. Could be significant. Draper had good court speed there. Used his legs here, Mark. He accelerated. Look at Rafa, though. One benefit back there is he's returning in the shade anyway. Draper dialing up first serves when he needs them. He's got him. Well, it was a mistake. It you feel for Jack Draper. It was just the wrong time to go. He, he was too far back in the court. It was a desperate move, and he gets caught Advantage. with this. No, no. He panicked a bit, didn't he? He just wanted to get to the net early, and he just started too far back and wasn't quite quick enough. For a second time, Nadal with the chance to go up two sets to one. Oh, 
that's one of his favorite and shots, but he's missed it. Nadal. Nadal does go up two sets to one. Six and two, four. Nadal leads two sets to one. This whole experience for Jack Draper, though, is Love is a good one. Win, lose, or draw here, because he's getting to experience what it's like to play one of the greats under pressure with a pro Rafa crowd, which is understandable here. They're fair, but they're pro Rafa as they generally are, and just go through the pain and the experience and the joy. By the way. Such a learning curve here. He's not out of this match if his body holds up. So as soon as you slice the ball to Rafa, you can get into trouble. Now he's calling into the So he's bothered about the uh, floodlights that have come on. I think they're uh, they're glistening in the sunshine as well. So I think he's getting almost blinded. Got a bit of everything in this one, Fitzy. Yeah, there's plenty of light out there. I'm not sure we need them. Yeah, good stretch volley there from Rafa. Controlled the racket face there nicely. 13, 15. Best, best rally of sport in the world. Best rally of the match, by the way. It's come alive. Well, Rafa found his form in that point. This is the best point he's played, and Jack stayed with him. 14, 15. Hey, give credit where credit is due. Trying to play himself into form here. Nadal. Other well, sports may be a little easier to play than this one with a, a racket in your hand, but there's no doubt that this court, this rectangle, gives you so much room for creativity. And it was a significant point as well. Not only was it special. Draper's not going anywhere.
it's like a wave of emotion <laughs> even for the people watching this because Draper now looks more physical. Oh, you know, there was a period of time I thought he might have to shake hands, Mark, but he, he seems like he's fended the cramp off and he's, he's back physically to a large degree. That was a clever approach. He got the depth he needed to make Nadal defend. Advantage, Draper. We might be here for a bit longer yet. That's his worst slam in terms of closing out from two sets to one up as well for Nadal. He's lost here on three occasions when he's been in this position. The first time against Hewitt in 05, Vadasco 2016, Tsitsipas more recently in 2021. Happened only once at the US Open. 2015 when he was two sets to love up against uh, Fanini and has not lost from this situation at the other two majors. Juice. Well, it has been a, a boutique collection of forehands today. We usually see the quality and the quantity coming from Rafa. That hasn't really been the case, but there have been some excellent ones. And that was a crucial one. Saves the break point. Oh, it must have caught the line. Rafa showing his disappointment. Advantage, Draper. Probably looked out through the air to him, but it, it dipped onto the line, caught him. Second chance to get the ideal start to this fourth set for Draper. Fault. He's serving and bowling a lot too, isn't he, Rafa? More than normal. Stock standard on this side is usually to go wide on the, the serve and volley as well. Just a hint of desperation out here for Nadal in this opening game of the fourth set. application from Draper. Advantage, Draper. Usually in tennis, poor returns is the standard issue for having a great serve. That isn't the case with Draper, and that's why everybody's so excited about him. He's got a great serve, and he makes an awful lot of returns as well. He would have been bitterly disappointed with one that he missed on the previous break point. He's got another opportunity here to put that right.
He's got it. Game. Unbelievable depth by both players in that rally. And Nadal First running game. solid he is at the back of the court. Willing to trade with Nadal. He's got his reward here. I think when he started to cramp, Mark, I don't know about you, but I was thinking, look, he might have Rafa on a bad day. He might be struggling and out of form. And if Draper can maintain, if he can maintain a decent level, he was a, a realistic chance. Then when he got the cramp, that all turned on its head. Fault. But now, you know, to a large degree, that chance is back because Rafa still hasn't found form. And Jack seems better physically, so we might be here for a while yet. He's hitting the ball the way Rafa's hitting it, he's not overpowering Draper, is he? So so the young Brit has plenty of time, or more time than normal, I think. Because Nadal's the type of player that just makes you feel under the pump the whole time. I'll never forget Leighton Hewitt saying to me once in the hit-up, he, he felt overpowered in the hit-up. It's like hand grenades coming at you in the hit-up, you know. So he, he, he wants to overpower you, but it doesn't seem like he's got that power today. It's good work. In between the rubble of some of his shots, there's been some good tennis as well from Rafa. 30-14. Well, that was a typical point from him, wasn't it? What we're used to seeing over the journey. Break back point. Tentative steps there from Jack Draper on the way in after that ball went past him. Oh, my goodness. Just. Most of his career has been completely unrelatable to all of us normal human beings. That, however, is that relatable. <laughs> relatable to us, yes, but that's unrelatable to him as well. Oh, that is staggering athleticism. Advantage, Nadal. Why would Jack drop shot him? I don't know why. I think he's won one in this match. It's the supremacy of wishful thinking over reality, Fitzy. Because you're right, it hasn't worked out for him and he's played it on some big points. And here's another one.
Jane Nadal. That is all character. One game on. He didn't even find the middle of the racket on the last return there. But he got it back in a court. Well, Brad Gilbert wrote a book once called Winning Ugly. And there is benefit, there is character, and there's a lot of value in winning ugly. It lets you survive to another day where maybe you will hit form. So right now, Rafa is trying to win this one in, in an ugly fashion by his standards. And that's no insult to Jack Draper. He's, he's doing very well, but Rafa is not at his previous best here. Oh, he got. He got a beauty pass draper there. A little bit quicker out to the backhand, I thought, and uh, good control of the racket head. Helps being a righty, doesn't it? With a stumble there from Draper. Thirty left. Trying to become the eleventh left-hander to beat Rafa in the Spaniards' great career. Nori was the tenth most recently in the ATP Cup. Other players that have had one win over him: Barrera, Cleason, Zabayos, Meltzer, giving Chris Guccione the retirement in Sydney as well. players that have had left-handers that have had multiple wins against Rafa, Shapovalov, Vadasco, Gilles Muller, and Lopez, who's beaten Rafa four times. Forty love. Try to snap off a quick winner. And once again, this match oscillates, and this time it turns in the direction of Nadal. Two. Out. Love 15. Again, just a little indication of what's been going on with uh, Jack in terms of the uh, energy it takes to serve big. It's been a drop off. He's sitting at a 186 kilometers an hour in this fourth set currently. I know it's early stages. But that serve out wide in the opening set was about 180. He's lost about 17 Ks on that. He's managed to find the line there, as you can see. But those are significant drop off in terms of numbers for him on pace. 
fault. So G fifteen. Great work off the ball from Rafa there to be able so to take you. that ball on the rise. You can see that forehand there. Look at where he's looking to get in, drives through the shot. One of the better ones he's hit. Just. As a platoon, not an entourage. Mum, dad, sister, everybody here urging him on. You're telling me they're all related? <laughs> His wife there, third row back on the left. When you're at the US Open, he had 40 people with him. I'm not sure I know 40 people. physically isn't he Jack you've got a feel for him that was typical Nadal wear your opponent down advantage Nadal keep an eye on Draper here if we can get him into shot he just had nothing left in that point yeah and Rafa knows it immediately. Can he summon up the energy? Maybe it's it's warning, Mr. Draper. Can he push the cramps to the side again as he has done so magnificently for the last 45 minutes or so? Yeah, it sounds cruel that he gets a warning there, but Fault. they're back. point was the dagger. Nadal leads three games to one. And it is his body, not his opponent, that is the thief of his dreams. Because the tennis is good enough. Yeah. Right now it's probably the biggest thing he needs to address in his young career, isn't it? His tennis is good enough.
Let's hope he doesn't have a full body cramp here at some stage. that tells you everything. 30 love. Well, this man is going in the right direction at the Australian Open. The defending champion is uh, looking like he is going to clear the first hurdle. It has not been easy. Game, Nadal. 4-1, and two sets to one for Rafael Nadal. What, if anything, does Draper have left here? Fifteen love. been somewhat ironic had the shot that got him into trouble 13, in the opening set 14. and actually get him out of trouble here in the fourth when he's got absolutely nothing left and he's running on vapors but that wasn't going to be the case Nadal still moving swiftly and thinking clearly on Jack one. Draper's face. And it may be as simple as just time will allow him to grow into his body. He's still only 21 years of age and the problems that he's had with cramping will go away. The price of success is loss, not 
just sacrifice. He has sacrificed in the gym. He has pushed his body and he has worked hard. But this is going to be a tough way to get bundled out of the Australian Open for Jack. Fifteen love. Thirty love. Rafa just put in the finishing touches on what has been a bruising encounter. Naki McDonald awaiting the winner of this one in the next round. He came through in four sets against Nakashima. They played once before him and Nadal, and that was in the autumn French Open back in 2020. The final reminder from the record of Jack Draper of just how good he is. Third you. Well, he knows the why he didn't win today. It's because of his body. As once again, we see that the racket and the ability to strike a tennis ball is not a problem for Jack Draper. The question is, that will linger, is how does he fix it? Amazing. What a collection of winners in this game from Jack Draper. Advantage, Draper. Use. 
So close. Three hours, 41 minutes of effort. Nadal with match point. Game center match, Nadal. 7-5, two, six, six, four, six, one. Rafael Nadal begins his defense of the title that he won here 12 months ago. It looks like a, a long road in for him from here, but he has finally passed the first hurdle. A gritty four-set win over Jack Draper.